This lesson is about sounding diagrams. Sounding is another word for remote sensing, and in this case, it's about the atmosphere. Sounding diagrams are used to answer questions like, in what way will clouds develop? And are thunderstorms likely to occur? And if so, what will be their severity? Now this is a quite technical lesson in which we'll use concepts from all previous lessons, so please bear with me, and if it's too difficult, just pause or rewind. Now soundings are made with weather balloons such as this one. The weather balloon is released and it will go up in the atmosphere and attached to the weather balloon is a little device called a radio sound. And this radio sound measures the altitude and for different altitudes it will measure the pressure, the temperature, the relative humidity or the dew point, the wind speed and the wind direction. And this information is sent back down. Across the world more than a thousand weather balloons are released each day and all the data is shared so that uh, weather uh, stations and meteorological services can use all the data to predict the weather. The data is set out in a graph as this one. This is the actual sounding diagram. And it's also called a thermodiagram or a stuva diagram. Now vertically you'll see the pressure in millibars and horizontally the temperature in degrees Celsius. And the pressure is set out logarithmically which means that the difference between 100 and 200 millibars at the top is larger than between 900 and 1000 millibars at the bottom. And by setting it out logarithmically, the height is more or less linear in this diagram. So if you go twice as far up in the diagram, you go twice as far up in the atmosphere, more or less. The sounding plots the temperature and the dew point for each height. And then you'll get a graph like this one. Two graphs, one for the temperature and one for the dew point. As you can see, the temperature drops with altitude, with pressure, and that's something that you see normally. And the dew point is lower than the temperature at all altitudes. That means that there are no clouds forming here. Now let's see what we can do with a graph like this. First of all, let's see what we can say about the humidity, and for that, the relative humidity. We need an extra set of lines. These lines are called isohumes. Iso for the same and hume for humidity. These lines indicate uh, points of equal humidity. At the top you can see the scale. It's in grams water per kilogram of uh, air. So first of all, you can measure the humidity at ground level. I'll show you how. You'll use the open circle, which is the dew point at ground level. And you follow the isohume up, and then it's uh, 20 grams per kilogram. This is the actual amount of water uh, in the gas state, in the air, at ground level. We can find the relative humidity here if we know how much water vapor the air can hold at maximum without condensation taking place. And for that you follow the actual temperature up. That temperature at ground level, 40 degrees Celsius here, uh, has a humidity of 50 grams per kilogram. So the relative humidity is 20 divided by 50 times 100%. So the relative humidity is 40%. So I'll repeat, the relative humidity uh, can be found by determining the actual amount of water vapor in the air. That has to do with the dew point. And by finding the maximum amount or the saturation uh, amount of humidity in the air. And that's uh, indicated by the actual temperature. I've cleared the diagram. Uh, you see the isohumes here, uh, as well as the pressure and the temperature. There are two sets of extra lines we need. First of all, dry adiabets. In some uh, lesson uh, previously, I explained that if you uh, go up in the atmosphere, if an air parcel goes up in the atmosphere, it expands because the pressure is lower and it cools due to expansion. And it cools adiabatically. That's what this word dry adiabet refers to. And it's called a dry adiabet because um, if no condensation takes place, all the water will be in the gas state and that air is said to be dry. That air cools with a dry lapse rate. And the drop in temperature for each kilometer is about 9.8 degrees Celsius. That's why these lines are more or less uh, linear. Then there's an extra set of lines. Imagine that a parcel of air 
uh, is going up in the atmosphere, it cools, and at a certain point it hits the dew point, so water will start to condense. Now if water condenses, energy is released. This is the opposite mechanism of evaporation, where you need energy to evaporate water. If water condenses, this energy is released again. So if water starts to condense in a parcel of air, this parcel of air will not cool as fast as it did according to the dry lapse rate. Then you get these sets of lines. These are moist adiabets because the water starts to become moist. Water droplets will form. And you can see they don't drop in temperature as fast as the dry adiabets. Now, this is the same diagram, but I left out the moist adiabets. We don't need it now. And at ground level, there are two points indicated, the temperature and the actual uh, humidity, so the dew point. A question might be to find the cloud base. The cloud base has to do with the lifting condensation level, or the LCL. The lifting condensation level is the level at which you have to lift a parcel of air for condensation to start. That's when clouds form. The temperature of the air at uh, ground level is 40 degrees Celsius, and the dew point is 25 degrees Celsius. Now, if the parcel of air, for whatever reason, is lifted, then it cools according to the dry adiabet, indicated by the red arrow. At some point, the temperature will have dropped enough for condensation to start. But at higher levels, this temperature is different. At ground level, it would have been 25 degrees. That's the dew point. To find the dew point at higher altitudes, you have to follow the dry isoheum. Follow the dashed line, that's the blue arrow, starting from the dew point at ground level. Somewhere they will intersect, and that is the lifting condensation level. The LCL here is 850 millibars. At this altitude, the parcel of air will start to condense. So this is the lifting condensation level. Now a question might be, how much water vapor and how much liquid water is there in the air at a pressure level of 400 millibars? Because water starts to condense, above the LCL we need to follow the moist adiabet. So let's get rid of the dry adiabets and replace them by the moist adiabets to keep the diagram a little bit more simple. Now we're going to lift this parcel of air and we're going to follow the moist adiabet. I've interpolated here between the two moist adiabets that are visible. So this is how the parcel of air will cool uh, when it's lifted further. And I've stopped at 400 millibars. That's the altitude at which you want to find the amount of water vapor and liquid water in the air. The temperature of the parcel of air at that altitude will be minus degrees Celsius. You can read it off down at the bottom. And the saturation mixing ratio, or the saturation amount of water in the air, is 8 grams per kilogram. You see that by following the isoheum, the dashed line. The air at 400 millibars can only hold 8 grams of water vapor per kilogram. But the actual amount of water vapor is more. You follow this line, parallel to the isoheums, and it's 18 grams per kilogram. There's no change here, because this is the amount of water in the parcel of air we started out with, and the parcel of air lifts to 400 millibars, so this is still the same amount of water in the air. But only 8 grams per kilogram can be in the gas state. So the liquid amount of water will be 18 minus 8, is 10 grams per kilogram. So this cloud, which has formed, will have an amount of 10 grams of water droplets per kilogram of air at a pressure level of 400 millibars. Now let's zoom into the sounding diagram um, we started out with. I only included the isoheums and the dry adiabets, and you can see the temperature graph uh, indicated by the closed circles, and I only included the dew point at ground level. A question you can answer with uh, sounding diagrams is par uh, parcel stability, which indicates whether a parcel of air will lift, uh, whether it will sink back down, or whether it will uh, lift further, stop to lift, whatever. You can figure it out with the diagram, and I'll show you how. The temperature is 35 degrees Celsius, and the dew point is 20 degrees Celsius. So this is a different graph as I've shown before. 
Um, as I've shown, uh, is that the path of air will lift according to the dry adiabat. Uh, now, this ha might happen during the day when the sun shines on the surface of the earth and this parcel of air will get a little bit uh, higher temperature and it will start to start to rise. Now, it will follow the dry adiabat. But you can see that uh, for this red arrow, the temperature of the parcel of air is higher than the surrounding air. So this is where it will lift, but it will stop here because now the temperature of the surrounding air will stop to drop, but the parcel of air would drop below the temperature, so it will not be buoyant anymore. Zi is the level at which convection is inhibited. Suppose that for whatever reason this parcel keeps on moving up. It might be pushed up by a mountain range, for instance. So if we follow the line further, we find the lifting condensation level. This is what I explained before. Now this is where clouds will form. And from this point onwards, we need to follow the moist adiabats. So I take out the dry adiabats and I show you the moist adiabats. Now imagine that this parcel of air will keep on rising. It won't do that by itself because its temperature is lower than the ambient temperature, remember? But suppose it's lifted for whatever reason. We need to follow the moist adiabat. So the parcel of air will cool according to this red line. And you can see that at some point, the temperature of the parcel of air will be higher than the ambient temperature again. This uh, point is called the level of free convection. If the parcel of air reaches this altitude, its temperature will get uh, high enough for it to become buoyant again. And then it will arise uh, on itself. In reality, this doesn't happen by itself. So this parcel of air has to overcome a sort of a blockage. And this blockage is indicated by the gray area here. It's called the sin, the convective inhibition. So for instance, the parcel of air may need to warm a little bit by the sun. It may be lifted by a mountain range or by a front. And the larger the sin, the, the more difficult it is to, for the parcel of air to reach the level of free convection. But if it does, it will continue to rise. Okay, I've zoomed out. Uh, on the bottom right you can see the Zi. That's the actual altitude up to which the parcel of air would be able to uh, uh, become buoyant. Then there's the lifting condensation level, that's the level at which clouds will form, and the level of free convection. That's the level above which the parcel of air will become buoyant. As you can see, the parcel of air will continue to rise, so we can follow the moist adiabat and see what happens. You see that it goes all the way up. At a pressure level of 180 millibars, only there the temperature will drop below the ambient temperature. And it will keep on rising up to this point where the temperature would drop below the ambient temperature. This altitude, this point is called the limit of convection, the LOC. It's a limit of convection because the parcel of air cannot rise any higher. Between the lifting condensation level and the limit of convection, water in the parcel of air will condense. So this is where clouds will form and water droplets will uh, be created. Uh, so a lot of energy is released here. And the area here, under the graph, is called the CAPE, the Convective Available Potential Energy. You can actually determine it from the graph, you don't have to know that in detail, but it's indicative for how much energy is available for the cloud. Now this might be a cumulonimbus cloud, and the larger this area is, the more energy is available for the cumulonimbus cloud to grow, and the severe, more severe a thunderstorm may be. Okay, let's uh, go to the summary. That's a lot of information. Uh, we've looked at sounding diagrams, which are kind of a profile of the atmosphere at a certain location. In the sounding diagram, you can find the temperature, the dew point, wind speed, and wind direction. I didn't show the last two. Now, an air parcel becomes buoyant if the temperature is higher than the ambient temperature. And you can figure that out with the sounding diagram as I've shown you. With the sounding diagram, you can predict storm occurrence and stability. Now, Zi was a level at which convection is inhibited. The parcel of air needs to be lifted above that level 
because it might be heated due to the sun, or it might be lifted by a front, or orographically by a mountain range. The LCL was the level at which you have to lift the parcel of air for condensation to start, and the LFC, the level of free convection, was the level at which the parcel of air will become buoyant. It will start to rise on its own. And it will rise and convect up to the point that's called the LOC, the limit of convection. Uh, normally that's somewhere where the stratosphere will start. And then there are two measures. The sin is the strength of the lid. So remember that in previous lesson I explained something about uh, warm air being a lid on the atmosphere, preventing air from becoming buoyant. Um, well, the sin actually tells you how strong this lid is. And the cape is a measure of storm severity. Okay, that's about it. It's a lot of information. Um, it's quite difficult. And as you've seen, we've used a lot of concepts from previous lessons. So you might want to watch uh, so certain parts again and review what I've explained. I hope you could follow it and thank you for watching.